rejoicing and we're glad in this day. Yeah, I thank God for another day. Amen. <clears throat> thank God for all of you that make your way out to Sunday school every morning, every uh, Sunday morning, and we just we're grateful. Amen. To be here. Uh, <clears throat> our lesson today is lesson number six. We're coming from Genesis 21, 8 through uh, 20. Our focus today is uh, despite our sins, God will, will not abandon those he loves. And we're talking about Hagar and Ishmael not forgotten. Okay. Hagar and Ishmael not forgotten. And sometimes, you know, in this, in this life, we, uh, we forget about people that we love in that right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read in the paper where, like, uh, like uh, little children are forgotten to be taken out of, of the back seat of a car? And, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in uh, 100 degrees uh, temperatures, and next thing you know, they die because somebody has forgotten to get them out. And, you know, sometimes we just forget things. But uh, the Lord let uh, you know, Hagar know and, and uh, Abraham know that He would not forget Ishmael. And you know how the story goes. Uh, you all know the story of Abraham. How God had told him to get up and leave his country, and he obeyed God. And, took Lot with him and some of the other people. And God told me, I'm going to take you to a land. He said, you know, that in other words, that I'm going to show you a land that's prepared by him. Amen. So the Bible says that Abraham staggered not, and he went uh, uh, as God had told him to do. And, and um, of course, the story leads on up where they divided the land, him and God, and how Lot got in trouble down in uh, Solomon and Gomorrah. All this adds up to where he is. And God spoke to Abraham one day and told him that he was going to have a son. And that uh, uh, by, through his son, you know, it would be a great nation. Mm -hmm. In other words, you, uh, you can pick up the sand and you can't count the sand and you can't count the stars as to mm -hmm. how God was going to bless Abraham. But, well, somehow along the line, you know how when God tells us something and it don't come to pass within a day or two, or maybe a year, we want to help God out. Mm -hmm. You know, we feel like, God, you, well, you're just not moving fast enough. You know, you, you promised me this, but you're not moving fast enough. It don't seem like the promise is going to ever come. So we're learning this story that because of that, you know, Cyril took matters into her own hands. Mm -hmm. Abraham listened to Cyril and got in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. When we don't follow God's directions and listen to him, Guess what? It leads us into trouble or destruction. So we're going to talk about that today. Mr. John, God promised Abraham and Cyril a child, the start of a mighty nation, blessing the whole world. But as the years passed, Cyril grew old, and the possibility of conceiving a child grew slim. So she came up with a plan to give her maidservant, Hagar, to Abraham. And after he slept with Hagar, she conceived and gave birth to a son, Ishmael. When Ishmael was, became a teenager, God fulfilled his promise to Abraham and Cyril. They had a son whom they named Isaac. And we're going to talk about this today, <clears throat> how God rescues uh, Ishmael and Hagar, and they still have hope. Uh, so let's talk about uh, strained relationships. Genesis 21, 8 through 13. The child grew and was weaned. On the day that Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance of my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, do not be distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. So let's know that God, what his promise is, he don't forget about us. And he don't forget the promises that he has made to us. Okay? Uh, the Lord promised Abraham a son and many descendants through Sarah when the patriarch was 75 years old. Now, this was 25 years before Isaac came on the scene. Amen. But when the son did not come soon, Abraham and Sarah took matters into their own hand. I say something. When we take matters in our own hand, we get into all Yeah. I'm telling you, when God has already told us that we, he's going to do something, God's promises are not slack. That's 
right. Amen. And what he says, what he says, it, it, he means it. Amen. And Sarah directed Abraham to be intimate with an Egyptian slave girl named Hagar. This was her handmaid. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she asked her husband to go in, you know, so that she could conceive. Because back then, if, if a woman couldn't have children, you know, they would ask their uh, handmaid, you know, the concubine, to have children for them, and they would raise those children as their own. But uh, a woman wasn't looked on as a woman when she uh, really couldn't have children. You know, they, a lot of people talked about it. You know, in our days, when you got pregnant, people talked about you. Mm -hmm. But back then, when you got pregnant, you know, it was, it was an honor uh, to be able to have children. And she directed Abraham to be intimate with the slave. This not only resulted in the birth of Ishmael, but also unanticipated sorrow to the family. Yet even then, the Lord remained faithful to his covenant, uh, con conviction of promise to Abraham. The patriarch was 99 years old when God declared that within a year, Sarah would give birth to a son. When Abraham turned 100, his son was born, given the assigned name and circumcised. He told, uh, the angel came and appeared to Abraham and told him that God was going to Bless him with a son. Mm -hmm. Then he came to Cyril, uh, well, the Bible says that Cyril laughed. She heard him talking mm -hmm. and said she, uh, that she laughed. Mm -hmm. And God answered, said, uh, why did you laugh? And she, she got scared and said, I didn't laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, yes, you did. He said, I heard you laugh. He said, but is it anything too hard for God? Yeah. Right. Here she is. She's past the, the barren age. Yeah. You know, who, who would ever think a woman that was 90 years old or uh, could give birth to a son, you know, or to a child or anything. You know, we're past barren age, you know. Uh, when you get a certain age, you know, you don't have children anymore. Mm -hmm. But see, it's nothing too hard for God. Right. And when God promises something, he holds on to his promise. So when the angel told her, by this time next year, you'll have a son, yeah. you know, and that came to pass. But in the meantime, she had to take matters into her own hand and have her handmaid to have a son, which was called Ishmael, you know. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that when Ishmael was born, before her son came, that she loved him. Yeah. You know, I have no doubt in my mind. When you read the story, she, she had to love Ishmael and, and the handmaid too. But, but the thing about it is, after uh, the handmaid saw that she could, wasn't going to have any children, she began to kind of laugh at it. Mm -hmm. You know how people are when they think they got a little bit, mm -hmm. and you ain't got nothing they kind of puff the, uh, the chest out and feel like they, they are somebody. Mm -hmm. That's the way the handmaid was doing her, like teasing, like, you ain't got no children, but I sure can have his children. You know, Abraham prepared a large feast to celebrate the winning of Isaac. Now, when this son came, Abraham did something different. He, he prepared a big feast and wanted everybody to come to the party. You know, uh, when uh, Isaac was uh, eight, eight days old, they winged him and, and uh, circumcised him. They wanted everybody to come to the party. The festive occasion was shattered, though when Sarah noticed Ishmael mocking Isaac. Nobody said what he was doing. I don't know what he was doing. The Bible didn't say. But it said that he was mocking him, probably making fun of it. As a mother concerned for the welfare of her son, Sarah demanded that Abraham banish Hagar and Ishmael. Sarah's contempt was so great that she uh, refused to address the Egyptian servant and her son by name. That woman, she said. I want you to get rid of that woman. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when she saw this man, this uh, young man uh, making a mockery of her son, she got so mad, she told him, didn't even call her name. Yeah. She said, I want you to get rid of that woman mm -hmm. and her son. Now, you know it had hurt uh, Abraham. That's her son. Yeah. That's his flesh and blood. She didn't care about it being Abraham's flesh and blood. She just wanted to get rid of him. You know, moreover, Sarah was determined to prevent Ishmael from being uh, a cohair with Isaac in the family inheritance. They don't want, they want this young man to have anything. Although this was this was Abraham's son, and Ishmael didn't ask to come here. Right. That's the way it is when, when uh, 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 when women have children, you know, and some children are born and they're mistreated. They didn't ask to come here. You know, that was you and a man that laid down to get these children. You know, and you laid down to get, and so that when you lay down, guess what? You know, and you ain't taking nothing. You're gonna come up pregnant. Well, don't get mad because you done, you done got pregnant, you know, you having a baby, and you're going to mistreat the child because the child didn't ask to come here. Right. And a lot of people, even today, are mistreating children because of that, that the, the, the same thing that happened. You know, because they lay down and they got it and they don't want them. 
What if you don't want a child out of place that you could take it? Amen. But back then, you know, here, here, here she was. She done got mad, you know, because the woman laid down with her. She told her to. Yeah. You know, and back then, the, the handmaids had to do what the wives tell them to do. You know, it, it was just like slavery time. You know, a slave had to do what the master say do. You don't do what they say do, guess what? You get punished. And according to the social um, convention of, of the day, a mistress could not uh, abruptly, uh, that means uh, take matters into their own, their own hand, expel a female slave and her children. It wasn't her duty to do that. You know, she had no right to do it. And Abraham knew this. Perhaps this was one reason the matter involving Hagar and Ishmael displeased Abraham so much. It also likely, it's also likely that he was anguished by the possibility that Hagar and Ishmael might not survive on their own in the harsh wilderness. In other words, she wanted to send them out into an area where they had never, ever been. You know, Sarah wasn't having no kind of heart at that time. You know, she, she sure didn't have the love of God on the inside of her, you know, to act like this. You know, when you act harshly like this, God is not in it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. So she, she really didn't care what happened uh, to Abraham's son and the handmaiden when she sent them out in the wilderness. She didn't care whether they lived or whether they died. Mm -hmm. And this was Abraham's own son that the patriarch was sending into the desert. Yeah. God told Abraham not to be upset about the situation involving his slave, wife, and her son. Abraham should do what Sarah demanded, even though it seemed harsh and inconsiderate. In other words, God told him to do as your wife said. You know, to keep all this confusion down. Yeah. I want you to do as your wife say, but the, I want you to remember one thing. I'm going to take care of Isaac. You don't have to worry about him. This is what God was telling Abraham. You don't have to worry, because I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to make him a nation too. The Lord explained that his covenant, covenant, covenant uh, promises were fulfilled through, uh, was fulfilled through Isaac, not Ishmael, because Isaac was the real heir of the covenant. Yet God would make a nation out of the descendants of Hagar's son, for he too was one of Abraham's offspring. And because he was Abraham's son, God promised to do that for him. Right. Amen. Because he said, I will bless your seed. Yeah. You know, and that's exactly what he did. He, uh, if you read on about uh, Ishmael, Ishmael became a great nation. Uh, they was a, a, a furious nation, uh, living out in the wilderness and everything, but you know, and, and they... They really turned against, uh, if you read on down in there, they turned against Israel. Yeah. You know, and they're part of the Arab country right today. It's it called Ar the Arabians go all the way back to Ishmael. Yeah. You know, so so uh, he did make him a great nation. Yes. You know, it, it, Ishmael did, it just went out there just to be out there. But God's going to save them too, you know. So we'll, we'll learn all about that. The covenant that God made with Abraham. Abraham, uh, when God suffered him to leave everything, uh, at, at first, the culture, including his native country and birthplace. Second, his relatives. And the third, his family. When God told him to leave his family and everything, just get up and go with me, guess, he took some of his family with him. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we do the opposite of what God say, shrub or rise. Y'all yeah. <laughs> know how it happened with Lot? Yeah. How he was down in Solomon and Gomorrah? Mm -hmm. You know, and if he hadn't took him with him, guess what? He had, he had to go through that trouble. That's right. And how they had captured Lot at one time and Abraham had to go and get all the women back. You know, he went through a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, if he had listened to God and did what God, he wouldn't have to go through that. Right. But he had to go through some things because uh, although he was obedient to God and, and got up and went where God wanted him to go, he still took some people with him. Yeah. Genesis 21, 12 states that Isaac, not Ishmael, would be the heir of God's covenant promise to Abraham. Years earlier, the creator stated that, that uh, stated his pledge in form of a series of seven promises. In Scripture, seven was often viewed as a symbolic number of perfection. First, even though Abraham and his wife were past childbearing age, God promised to make the patriarchs descendant into a great nation. Second, God would personally bless Abraham. The underlying in Hebrew word means that God would give the patriarch and his descendants the ability to flourish and, and be successful in serving as the creator's Bond servant wherever he sojourned. Third, God will make Abraham famous, especially due to his prominent <coughs> and considerable wealth. Fourth, God will make the patriarch a source or channel and prime example of blessings to others. 
Fifth, God will bestow his favor on anyone who treated Abraham with kindness. Six, God would in invoke harm to those who treated Abraham with contempt. Mm -hmm. And seventh, all the families of the earth would be blessed through and because of the patriarch. We are blessed today That's right. because we are, we're his offspring. Yes. Amen. Coming down through the generations, we are blessed. We're Abraham's seed. Yes. Right. Amen. He said, I'll make your seed so, so great that even, you can't even count the stars. Right. And you sure can't count the sand on, on the beach. Amen. Go to the beach and pick up a, a, a hand of sand and see if you can count every grain that's there. <laughs> you can't do, God said, I'm going to make your nation great like that. Amen. And guess what? He has made his nation great. Amen. The promises that God has for us. Guess what? Yes. He will he hold on to his promises. Right. The same promise that he gave Abraham, he's given to us. Mm -hmm. Because he said, I'm coming back again, yeah. and I'm going to receive you unto myself. Mm -hmm. Guess what? He, and that's a promise yeah. that he's going to come back for his yeah. church yeah. one of these days, yeah. and we're going back with him. Yeah. He said, one of these days, we're going to be called up to meet him mm -hmm. in the air. And when God makes us a promise like that, we can hold on to We got hope today. Yes. And, and, and guess what? He ensured uh, uh, Hagar that she had some hope. He ensured Ishmael that he had hope. Because Ishmael, I think he was about 16 years old when they went out to, into the wilderness. I mean, he, he was at that age. He was a teenager. You know, and, and uh, we'll, we'll read that just in a few minutes. Let's talk about the uh, sovereign intervention. Genesis 21, 14 through 20. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered into the desert of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she, set off, then she went off and sat down about a bow shed away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the, cry, the boy crying, and the angel called to God, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, "What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by, by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation." Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. So this lets us know that God was taking care of Ishmael. Yeah. Uh, even when he saw uh, Sarah crying, <clears throat> where they had run out of food and out of water. And uh, when you wander in the desert, you don't know how long you're going to be out there. And uh, the Bible says that he only gave her one of these, uh, about, I guess it was about, uh, 16 gallons of water that was in the in the uh, pouch that she had. So you know, uh, after you got there for a few days, you're gonna in a desert. You're gonna be drinking water. Mm -hmm. Abraham, having been reassured by God, arose early the following morning and prepared some food. He gave this to Hagar, as well as strapped an animal skin filled with water, containing about three gallons, on her shoulders. Then the patriarch sent her away with his son in the wilderness of Bathsheba. Eventually, the container of water ran out, and Hagar, being filled with despair over the dire situation facing her and her son, placed the oxalates, uh, yeah, that means growing from childhood to, to, to uh, uh, adulthood. You know, in other words, he was, he was a teenager. He was between the age of a child and an adult under one of the nearby scrubs. Uh, by this time, both were weak from dehydration, facing death. Hagar decided to abandon Ishmael, for she could not bear to see her son expire. I can imagine how this woman felt mm -hmm. out in the desert, and then all of a sudden, you don't have no food, mm -hmm. you don't have no water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. You know, no protection, no anything. You know, and then, she knew that they were going to die. And so she went a, a distance away from her son because she couldn't stand to see her son die. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to see the children die. No. Now, I mean, you, when our children are born, we always want our children to bury us mm -hmm. before we bury them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that's not always uh, the way that it falls. Mm -hmm. Amen. And she didn't want to see her son die of thirst or of hunger. So she went away from him and she began to cry. 
And I'm, I'm pretty sure he'd be good to cry too. When you see your mama cry, you're gonna cry. Because every time my daddy and mama cried, we cried. Yeah. Whether it was good or whether it was bad, yeah. we're gonna cry too. And as Hagar said across from her son about a bow shot that is around 100 yards away, she alone with her son began to sob. And God heard her. Yes. I mean, God, being fully aware of the circumstance, had his angel from heaven called to Hagar and asked what was upsetting her. In other words, what's the matter? Why are you crying? The Lord's messenger then told her not to be afraid any longer. God had heard Ishmael's, Ishmael's crying. And the mother was directed to stand up and help her boy to his feet, grabs his hand. For God intended Hagar's son to live and become a great nation. In other words, he opened up her eyes. And when he opened her eyes, she saw a whale over there. Oh, he enabled her to see a whale filled with water. In turn, Hagar went over to it, filled her container, and gave drink to Ishmael. See, God can make a way. Yes. Even in the desert, yes. he'll spread you a table yes. in the desert. Yes. You know, when nothing else is around, and I'm pretty sure that she had been looking for a long time for water or whatever. Yes. You know, and that was over, but all of a sudden, God opens up her eyes. Yes. And she sees a well over there. She sees water, and she goes to it. She was able to fill her, her, her uh, container with water and able to give it to her son in order to live. God's favor rested on Ishmael, who lived in the wilderness and became an archer. Ishmael eventually settled in the desert of uh, Paran, an Arab region located in the east central part of the Sinai uh, Peninsula. According to the custom of the day, Ishmael's mother found a wife for him from her native land of Egypt. And Ishmael, guess what? He prospered. And he prospered because of his father, mm -hmm. Abraham. Mm -hmm. God is not going to leave us alone, son. A lot of times we feel like that nobody cares about us, that we're in this world all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. But when we begin to pray mm -hmm. and seek God's faith, we'll see. Listen, we'll see that God has people around for us. Yeah. I think it was Elijah uh, on one occasion, you know, when he had done all that he had to do, you know, he looked around and said, there's nobody left for me. You know, there's, there's nobody, you know, that's wanting to serve you but me. Yeah. But God told, opened up his eyes and let him look on the mountain and he said, there's 7,000 that never have bowed bow down. Wow. Amen. You, there, there's a lot of more prophets yes. that, you, that you don't know nothing about. Yeah. So God always has somebody you know, around in the bush for us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When, when we think that things are so hard mm -hmm. and, and, and we just can't stand it anymore, God has a way of making a way out of no way. Right. He is the way maker. Right. I mean, we, 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 we talk about that all the time. He's the way maker. Amen. Well, sometimes we just say things and we really don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Amen. But when you believe that God is a way maker and that he will make a way out of no way, right. that he is a wheel in the middle of a wheel, mm -hmm. amen, that he is the bright and morning star, he's everything that we need. Yes. When we start believing that yes. and get that down in our heart, then we'll know that he is who we say he is. And he, he is. He, he made a way for them. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and uh, they didn't have to suffer uh, and, and go through the things that uh, she thought that they was going to go through. Mm -hmm. And man, they were able to live, but they became, they became something. I'm telling you, that Ishmael did. Mm -hmm. But uh, God still blessed him yeah. because of Abraham. And uh, Muslims, it says, regard Abraham as a supreme uh, patriarch and his eldest son, Ishmael as the distinguished patriarch of the Arab people. Therefore, the Muslims give sacred homage to those two men. Muslims do. The Arab prophet Muhammad found the Islamic faith born in Mesir, uh, which was a flourishing financial city in the Arabian Peninsula. Muhammad belonged to the whatever tribe, Quats, tribe who traced their heritage directly to Ishmael. Yes. So he, he, he did become a great nation. You know, God promised uh, uh, Hagar and Abraham that he would make a nation out of Ishmael. Yes. So that lets us know that God don't forget about us. Yes. Right. You know, although we feel like the other people will forget, and sometimes folk will forget about you, yes. but God never forgets you. Right. Amen. Amen. And he sees you when you're in your troubles. Yes. Amen. He sees what, uh, what all of us are going through, you know. And, and, and uh, he's that kind of God that will make things, make a, a crooked road straight. Yes. Several years ago, a local news 
report appeared on the evening news in the Midwest. The story was about a man and his faithful dog. It began with a tragic car accident in which a drunk driver killed his wife and two young children. Ron sank into a deep depression during which he tried to escape from his pain through alcohol. And as time passed, liquor became his nightly ritual. When he was sober, he was still kind and, and attentive to his dog, Chester. But when he was drunk, he was mean and negligent. Nevertheless, Chester remained devoted and affectionate to Ron. One evening when Ron was drunk, he was in such a rage that he kicked Chester, breaking the ribs of the poor dog. Mm -hmm. Ron then lost consciousness and fell, uh, striking his head against the kitchen table. And when he went, while he bled, Chester dashed out through the door, the dog door. And despite the pain in his chest, got a neighbor to come to Rod's aid. Wow. Ron was saved from a otherwise certain death. But the blow in Chester's chest was too severe. And the poor pup expired the same night. Mm -hmm. And because of Chester's sacrifice, Ron committed himself to a sobriety slowly getting his life back together again and recounting his story to a TV news reporter. The devotion of Chester to Ron is quite similar to Christ's devotion to us. As rotten as we can be, mm. and as awful as we can be behave towards God, mm. Jesus still died for us and never abandoned us. Yeah. His love for us is like a mountain stream that never ceases to flow. And I always quenches the thirst of those who seek its living water. Mm -hmm. That's how good God is to us. <laughs> yes. Although sometimes we are mean and we are, we are hateful and, and we don't do what we're supposed to be doing, he still loves us. And you know, that was the love of a dog. Yes. I mean, and and, and, and I, I just uh, seen on the news just the other day where a, a man was unconscious and the dog saved his life. Mm -hmm. You know, where he ran, but I think the house was on fire. And the dog ran next door and got a neighbor. And they said because of that dog, guess what? That neighbor's life was saved. This just happened on last week. But I look at this little pup here, how although he was hurting in his chest, he had a broken ribs and everything, he still went out of his way to save his master. And that's the way God is with us. Thanks, I'm telling you, God is a good God. Yes, he and he's good all the time. Yes. And it, even when we're not good. Yes. And we're not. Yes. Amen. We don't do everything that he tells us to do. Right. Amen. We don't keep all the commandments. Yes. Amen. We're sometimes we're just, we're just uh, 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 awful people. Yes. You know, even in, in, the, in the things that we do, in the sinners and all, God still looks at us. Mm -hmm. And he still gave his son Jesus to die for us. Yes. And, and the Bible said he will never abandon. He said, Lord, I'm with you always. Mm -hmm. Even until the end of time, God's going to be with us. Yeah. No matter what we're going through, no matter what we have done in life, God is going to always be with us. He will send his angels to watch over us. Yeah. After Haggai and her son, is, oh, does anybody have to say something? Sometimes I just Anybody? After Haggai and her son Ishmael were expelled from the security of Abraham's camp, they wandered in the wilderness, desolate and dying of hunger and thirst. Haggai, who had been taken from her homeland of Egypt and compelled to bear a child from a foreigner, now expressed her misery to God. The Lord, however, did not abandon her, for she was shown a will and given a promise. And as with Haggai and Ishmael, God does not abandon us, but loves us despite our many failings. Yes. Amen. And we have a lot of faults. Yes. None of us are good. Yes. Come on in. Amen. There's none good yes. but him. Yes. Amen. Because we're going to make mistakes. As long as we're in this human body, yes. you're gonna, you're, we're going to mess up. Yes. Amen. That's why we have a Savior that we can turn to, mm -hmm. that we can run back to. Whenever we get off in error, Amen. Don't run from God, but run back to Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what's wrong with a lot of people today, especially with this COVID stuff. You know, they have turned their back on God. You know, they're back out in the world, and they're doing just what they want to do. You know, but God still loves them. Right. He, he loves the backslider. Yeah. Amen. And He's waiting for us to come back to Him. Yeah. He said, I'm standing here at your door, and I'm knocking. And if you will let me in, I'll come in, and I will suffer for you. Yeah. 
and you can suffer with me. He said, but I'm not going to knock your door down, but I'm knocking at the door. Whosoever will, let me come in. He said, and you, you can be with me, I'll be your God, and you'll be my child. And he's standing there, waiting on us to come to him. That's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. He's always there. Whenever you need him, he'll be right there. Yes. Amen. Yes. God is a good God. Yes. Amen. Anybody else? I think I kind of covered this pretty good. Yes. I told God to let me uh, give me what he wants me to say. Mm -hmm. And after he gives what, what he wants me to say, I'll sit down. Okay. So he has given me what he wants me to say. And uh, I'm going to sit down. Amen. 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 Amen.